Hey, welcome back to the channel. It is the next step in making this little 3.5 inch hunting knife. And the next step is actually the, uh, the guard right here. If you're here just for the title of the video and you're curious how we got to this point so far, I have a uh, playlist of all the steps so far in this knife from the, the making of the Damascus to the forging to the shaping to the heat treat, all that stuff. So I'll, uh, I'll leave a link to the first video up here. And if you want to look at uh, the playlist, and then you'll see all of them in there. But right now, we're going to work on the guard for this knife, which is going to be made of brass. As I've mentioned in one of the previous videos, I have all these chunks of brass. Uh, this one's a good chunk that I could do other things with, but I have a lot of pieces like this that are really no good. So what I want to do is cast a, uh, a, a guard for this knife with these pieces. So in order to do that, I've got to build a foundry. And that's what this video is going to be on. So building the foundry is going to be very similar to the forge build that I did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link the uh, burner video up here because I don't think I need to go through all the steps again because that, that video is still relevant. That's exactly how I'm going to build this burner. So after you watch this video, maybe come back, click this link, go watch that, and then uh, that'll tell you exactly how to make the burner. It'll give you all the parts you need, uh, everything you need for that step is in this video up here. So for now, we're gonna focus on the body of the foundry. So let's step over here and I'll show you uh, what I'm gonna use for the body. So when I was looking for materials for my, my forge build, I actually went to an army surplus store and I found this uh, air reserve tank and when I cut it up, I found it was too large of a diameter for the forge. So I kind of set it aside and figured it would just end up being scrap metal, but I think I'm gonna use it for this. And I think it'll be perfect. So what I've done is I, I had cut the ends off and having the keeping these ends is, is perfect because I'll need a bottom and then I'll need a lid for this uh, for this foundry so uh, it's got a couple little outlets and inlets here uh, which is no big deal because these are going to be covered anyway and then what I'll do is for the bottom I'll just weld this back back on upside down like this and then I'll uh, I'll pack the curved area and then put a hard surface down for the floor. And then for the top, I'll take this and I'll build a hinge for it so that it will open and close. And I'll probably put some sort of handle on it so that I can just open it with my hand with a glove on, of course. And then I'll cut a hole in the top right here. And that will be so I can uh, drop the brass or copper or aluminum or whatever I'm uh, smelting. So this should work perfectly. So uh, let's start building it. So this would probably be a little bit easier with a uh, angle grinder or something like that, but uh, I'm not quite sure I have enough uh, width on the, the wheel, the grinding wheel to actually get in here and do a nice straight cut. So just going to do it old school style. And I'm just doing a quick cleanup of where I just cut and then I'm going to get rid of this powder coating from around where I need a weld.
So I don't feel like there's any need to weld all the way around. I think we just need a few tack welds, like maybe four, six, eight of them. Uh, but I do wanna make sure that this is pretty straight up and down. So we're pretty close right there. All right, I think we're good there. So I need to cut the hole out of, the, out of this lid and I'm kind of upset that this hole saw that I have won't allow me to put another one on the inside. Uh, so two and a half is the largest I have and this hole right here is three quarter. So I was hoping to put the three quarter in here to give it a place to, um, to stick to, you know, so it doesn't wobble around. Uh, but I can't do it with this one. So all I've done is I put some clamps on my uh, drill press table. And so I can push this back. So I'm really hoping that I can just hold this and it's not gonna wanna wander. So I guess we're, I guess we're gonna find out here really quick. Lube that up a little bit. Sorry about the noise. Okay, with that hole drilled, I've got to get a hole drilled into the body of the foundry for the burner. So I need to determine how high in here I'm going to have the floor. And, uh, from there, I need to come up just a little bit and then drill the hole, but we have to drill the hole at an angle that it's gonna come in at an angle just, just past the walls so that the uh, flame will come in and you know do a little, uh, a little spinny spin in there. So, just have to uh, guess where things are gonna go. So first I just need to put something flat in here. Uh, kind of like that. And then I'm gonna measure up basically from here up to the top of that. And, and that's probably about the thickness the floor is gonna be, that piece of wood I put into there. So if I measure from you know this spot on the inside up we've got about two inches so I'm gonna go I'm just gonna say uh, two and a half inches to be safe from right here so let me put a mark at two and a half inches. And that way, uh, that's gonna be about the top of my floor. So with, uh, I wanna come up about an inch from the floor to the bottom, well, let's call it an inch and a half. 
to the to the bottom of the uh, the burner, and then the burner we need it's going to be an inch pipe. We're going to measure up an inch. So basically, we're kind of in this spot right here. So let me measure up an inch and a half, and that's going to be about where we're going to drill the hole. So now knowing where that hole is going to be, I am going to attempt to drill this hole. And so I've got, uh, I think this is an inch or an inch and an eighth. Yeah, inch and an eighth is going to be a little big. So I want to start my hole. Once I get my hole going, I want to angle this just so it's um, a bigger hole so I can actually angle my burner in there. some really cheap hole saws. I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to come out of there, but whatever. It's out now. Let's see if we can get the rest of this drilled. I'm actually gonna clamp this down to the table so it'll stay put. Hole drilled. Now here's a little chunk of one inch. So that, yep, that's going to be about just right for what we need. So you can see that hole's a little oblong, kind of oval. So now instead of going straight, we can turn it so it's going to go and, and uh, circulate in there. Okay, the next step is I'm going to weld a few of these nails in here. These are just uh, horseshoeing nails. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, weld these in here close to the top. And so pretend this is on the inside. I'm gonna weld this on the inside at an angle. That way when I put my, uh, my kale wool in here, I can put it on onto these nails. So I'll put one here, one here, one here, and one here. And then the kale wool will fit over these nails and it'll help hold it up in place. So I'm gonna put four of these in here and then I'm gonna put two in the lid sideways so I can rotate the kale wool onto there so it holds the kale wool and the refractory up in there as well. Okay. If I can get these on here. All the nails are welded on, on the body and the lid. You kind of see here in the lid, they're nice and uh, secure on there. So next step is I'm going to start uh, putting the, uh, the uh, kale wool in here and the refractory. So 
what I've got is I've got a little piece of uh, hard block that I kind of dug a little hole out to fit on the dome of this. And then I've got my kale wool cut out that I'm going to put in here along the sides. And for the lid, I'm going to use the basically what I cut off of the sides here to just put on the lid and wrap around. And I'm hoping that works. It should. If not, just start over. No big deal. Uh, I've got my bucket of water and I've got my Mizzou refractory. Uh, so to do the sides in this thing, I was trying to find another cylinder that was kind of smaller that would fit in here and, uh, you know, give me a little thickness on the sides. So I found this big cardboard tube that I had and I just wrapped it with uh, some shrink wrap. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to set this inside here like this and uh, that'll be a good... So once I get the kale wool in, then I'll put this in and then start packing uh, the refractory in there. Walls are going to be pretty thick, but um, not too bad. First step is I have to soak this kale wool. So I'm going to make a Mizzou uh, refractory very watery so it'll get into this kale wool and then leave some of the refractory on it to help the other refractory stick. Okay, dump some of this in, try to keep the dust down a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Don't want to breathe that in really. Okay, so I'm just going to mix this up a little bit. This is just a really watery mix. So I'm going to take this strip first, get it all nice and saturated with some of this stuff. bring it over and set it on the lid. I'm going to get this other little piece. So I'm going to put this down in the low spots of the body. And then I just need to, uh, soak this part of it so the jelly roll thing put it in here and start soaking this up have to go grab some more water. All right, just want to soak this up a little bit more. Okay, so now I just need to start kind of getting this stuff in place. So I've got the nails on here and I want to wrap get this in here and make sure I put these pretty securely on those nails because I don't want this lid falling off really there we go so I'm going to tear this off I'm going to put the rest of this in here
That way we've got some kale wool on the bottom there. And now I just want to pull this into here, kind of give it a twist to make sure it's on those nails like that. And then this uh, propane tank is what I'm gonna use to build a hole in the middle. Just pack around it and it should be, should be pretty nice there. Okay, so I think we're good there. So now I need to actually make my mixture my final uh, consistency mixture of the Miz, uh, the Mizu. Okay, I think I've got this where I want it. So trying not to make too big of a mess, but it's usually pretty inevitable. So I'm just gonna start smearing this around the lid. And now you can kind of see what I'm using this uh, propane tank for. Okay, let's get this. Uh, Smear it around here, get all that kale wool covered the best we can. Get that right up in the lid, kind of level it off. I mean, if you want to use tools, you can. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. But I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. And make sure it's somewhat level. I'm pretty sure after the fact I could go through and kind of scrub away some of this cement. But I'll do my best to get it level right here. Okay, so there's the lid. Now I gotta throw some of this into the body and get that bottom kind of filled up. So that we have a place to start putting the sides. I'm probably going to have to mix up some more of this cement too. Most definitely going to have to mix up some more cement. This foundry is probably going to be really heavy. But I don't plan on moving it too much. Okay, so let's get uh, this uh, kale wool into the body here and unravel it here and then got to put it on the little hangers that I, on the nails so that this stays up. Here we go. Get that nice and neat there. Around the outside of there. Press that down a little. Okay. Push that down into the floor that I just made in here. OK, 
Okay, so now I need to, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this pipe and I'm gonna pop a hole in here. This is where our uh, burner is gonna go through. So pop the hole through there. Now, when I put my tube in, I'm gonna get it kinda as close to the middle as I can, and then I'm gonna push this pipe through the tube. If I can get it lined up, that is. Right there. So that way, I can get this, everything aligned just where I need it. So that's gonna pop through just like that. And turn this a little bit more. There, and then that way, the, uh, the burner is facing the direction we want. And then by this going into that tube, we're gonna be able to pour all the concrete in, uh, or the refractory, and it's gonna fill around the tube so we can take this out and then we're gonna have a hole in our tube. Now let's hope I can just get all this in here to make this work. On paper, it always works perfectly. All right, I've got to go mix up some more cement. And I'm gonna get, uh, oh, let's see, a dowel here. And then get that stuff poked down, because I'm sure it's not all the way down to the bottom. Okay, and put some more of this refractory in there. And of course, I'm gonna have to make more of it too. I'm assuming there's some sort of formula for this, but it's a formula, I don't know. And then the good thing about this is if, you know, some reason we don't get this down in there well enough, uh, once it's cured up a little bit and I pull this out, then I can always fill, fill in the voids. I'm just hoping that one of the voids isn't around the hole for the burner. That's the only place I really don't want it. I mean, I don't want it anywhere, but if I get to choose, that's where I don't want it. Okay, I'm gonna go mix up some more of this. Hopefully this is the last time. We'll see. So I mixed up my last bit of refractory. So this kind of has to work. This has to be it. We're getting pretty close, I'm pretty sure it is. Okay, I'm gonna rotate this thing again. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of poking around with a stick again. Just to make sure we're all the way down in there. I'm 
Well, I am making a mess. I'm glad I put this cardboard down on my workbench. Okay, I'm thinking that we're pretty set here. Feeling pretty consistent all the way down. Okay, so now I just need to uh, kind of get it leveled up over the top. So we have a nice flat surface for the, uh, the lid to mate with. And again, if I'm, if I'm off a little bit, then I can, uh, I'm sure I can just uh, file it down a little bit. pretty good it's looking nice and centered and that's pretty much all I've got so uh, got to make sure to order some more of this stuff Had to put a little bit more of this in this lid here some Voids right on the edge. A little bit of a sink right there. Okay. So I am going to... Uh, just let this sit for a little bit, start to cure up. And then once it hardens a little bit, I'm gonna come out here and uh, pull this middle piece, pull this little center tube out of here. And then um, pull, uh, pull the propane tank out, pull this tube out. This is probably gonna stay a little longer than everything else. It's hard to tell if that's if that's in there right. But uh, yeah, I think we're good. I mean, everything looks pretty good to me. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting for this, I'm just gonna get the uh, burner done. And at that point, I can probably put the burner in this, weld it in, let this thing cure for a day or so. Uh, I still have to build the hinge for the, uh, for the lid, and uh, I have some ideas for that. So as soon as this is cured, uh, we'll get going on the next steps. So here we are next morning, and this is not completely cured. It probably won't be completely cured until I apply heat to it. But um, it looks like everything pretty much turned out the way I wanted it to. So you can see, got the little hole here for the heat to come through. Uh, you can't really see in here right now, but everything stayed nice and smooth along the side. But, uh, oh, and the, the lid fits on just, just right. So I have to do a couple more things before we give this a test run. And first is I need to make some sort of hinge. And I'm gonna put it on this back side over here, but I'll kind of show you what I'm gonna do on the side here. So I'm gonna attach this, I'm gonna weld this to the side and this rod will go inside of here. And I will weld this rod to the, to the lid and then I will take this piece of uh, rebar and I'm going to weld it to the lid and then to let me set this up a little bit and then to this bar so what I'm hoping uh, like on paper it sounds great but what I'm hoping is that 
what I can do is come over to this piece of rebar and grab it and lift the lid and just rotate it so it spins. And then once I get over to here, then I can just release it and it'll hang out there. And then when I need to close it back up, I can just rotate it back and close up the foundry. And then also I'm gonna put uh, two little handles on here because I need a way to be able to grab a hold of this. And I'll just use this hole right here for one of them. Figured why not, the hole's there anyway. And then I'll put the other one exactly on the other side. So, oh, and then I've got my uh, burner made up. I'm just gonna use the guts, uh, like the, uh, the regulator and everything from my other forge, because it'll fit right into here. So I've also got to get this welded in. So might as well get this going and see how it works out. Okay, so I just have the spot welded on here. And I wanna give this a little test to see if it's gonna work. So come over here, grab this, lift a little bit, rotate, set it right there. Do my business, come over here, rotate back, set it down. I think it's gonna work. Lift, rotate. Takes a little bit to get it to, to set down. Um, but I think it's just uh, kind of binding on itself. So, I mean, looks good. I'm gonna finish welding this part up. Okay, and the last thing I need to do is weld in the uh, burner. And this should fit in here just fine. Okay, I just cut a little bit off of this. And then I think I want this rotated this direction. Nope, we're gonna rotate it that direction. So I just have to fit this in here. Try to get it, uh, I'm just trying to get it. I'll show you all this as soon as I get all this done, but I created like a little channel in here for it to funnel around. And I just wanna get it so it kinda uh, hits that channel just right. And then the other thing I need to do is kind of make sure this thing's level, not really facing down. If anything, I probably want it facing up a little bit just to give it a help spinning upward. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little tack right there. And 
think we're good with that part. Um, I kind of want to just bring it in a little bit. this direction and then I'm going to give it another little tack. I don't want to weld this thing down completely. Uh, actually, I never even welded my, my other forge down completely, so no biggie. I'm just going to tack this on this side and then we're going to give this thing a test to see if it runs. Okay, that's in there solid enough. Okay, so essentially, that's it. Pop the top on there. There we go. Work that down. Um, it's ugly, but uh, I believe this is gonna work just fine. So let me get things set up and then we'll, uh, we'll give it a, we'll light it up and give it a test run. Okay, here we go. So I've got the uh, the propane regulator connected back here, and um, probably going to do ha have to do a few adjustments, but I um, guess we're just going to give this a go. See what happens. See if I can get it to start here. Uh, let this run for just a minute because what's going to happen is uh, it's going to heat up and then uh, it'll uh, start heating up the water and getting it to evaporate out of the uh, out of the kale wool inside so we'll leave it like this for now Let's see what happens 
see that running in there. Flames looking pretty good. You can see all the steam coming out of it. It'll get really bad here in a in just a little bit. As soon as it heats up more inside of that refractory and gets to the KO wool, it'll look like a like an old timey locomotive. And this burner will run a lot better once all that uh, all that water has been cooked out of this refractory and uh, kale wool. So we'll let this run for just a little bit. And you can see here that I just used the guts from my my other forge. So the flame inside's looking a lot better, and you can see the water pouring out from it. That's from it heating up and the water getting out of where it shouldn't be. So once all that water's out and it's completely dry inside, it's gonna it's gonna work really nicely. But you can see you can see the flame in there actually start to heat up a little bit better. There's a little bit of a sputter still, but it's getting better. So I really want to give this thing a whirl, but uh, before I do that, I've got to make some tongs to be able to get the crucible out of there. So I'm going to turn this off and let it cool. Uh, it'll continue to, the water will continue to evaporate out of that thing. So by the time I get the tongs made, uh, should be ready to, to give it a test. And I've got a bunch of copper that I can pop in there to see, see how well it works. Okay, so I think that they're going to work. Are they ugly? Yeah, they're really ugly. But my main concern was uh, function on this. Uh, if these work, I'll make a nicer pair, a little thicker, more robust. But these ones, I think are going to work. So the plan is heat it up, swing that out from there, and then I'll be able to get to this from the side and grab a hold of the crucible like this. If I need to set it down to readjust, I can do that. And then my only concern is, am I going to be able to turn it with weight in here? I'm pretty sure I can. Um, it feels okay, but I think if they were a little more robust, a little thicker up here, um, they'd be even better. But I think these are gonna work just perfect. And then I'll be able to set it back down in there, actually, grab it from the top, and then set it back down, close it back up, and good to go. So, I don't know if you can tell, but I got a little thin right here. I didn't have the right kiss block in my, uh, in my press. So it got a little thin, and that's about the point I kind of gave up on this pair. <laughs> so anyway, uh, next step is to see if this is gonna melt some copper. It's time to give this guy a run and see if we can melt some metal. We're gonna just try to melt some copper today. And then I have this, uh, this graphite crucible that I need to heat up and let cool again. So I'll do that really quick. Also, I've got some, some little ingot trays that I think I need to uh, do the same thing, heat, heat them up a little bit and then let them cool to get all the, all the uh, moisture out of them. Cause you definitely don't want to be pouring molten metal into anything with moisture. You're just going to end up hurting yourself. I want to show you we have a nice uh, little swirling effect in here. We're still 
burning off some water too. You can see all the steam coming off the side. The burner isn't sputtering. So I've got all these little copper pieces that I found at, uh, I think it was Home Depot. No, it was Lowe's. And they were all in their clearance for uh, like 25 cents a piece. So I just bought them all and I'm gonna melt all these down and make an ingot. Copper's melted, so I'm gonna see if I can pour this without doing too much damage to myself. So I heat it up. These little ingot trays. Should be free of um, of uh, moisture. it's working all right it's definitely up to heat uh, copper's got a higher melting point than brass so I shouldn't have a problem melting the brass uh, tongs hold the uh, crucible just fine it was easy to pour so uh, man I think this might be a success so uh, here's the final results it looks uh, 
as though the foundry is a success. This is uh, all that copper I bought from Lowe's. Uh, it was like four or five bucks a worth of copper and this is what I ended up with. This is a, a nice solid chunk. I'll be able to, I mean, remelt this or, you know, do a shape out of it or something like that. But also here's this little piece. It obviously didn't fill in too pretty down there, but uh, I mean, that's kind of a cool design on here. It's like a topographic map of a valley. It's really cool. But anyway, I think I'm ready to make a mold of the guard I want to make and uh, do, a, do a pour with the brass. So copper melts at like 1900 degrees where brass melts at uh, like 1750-ish, somewhere around there. So I shouldn't have a problem melting the brass, although I do need to do a little research on it because uh, I, I saw something about if you get it too hot, then it does this or that. I don't know. But, uh, I mean, we'll test it out and see if we can't get it to work. Hopefully it does, but I, I'll need to, you know, make a few things. I need to make a, a little case for the sand and a little form for all the sand and, and all that stuff. So it should be fun. But this was also fun. It was a blast making a foundry. I've been wanting to make one for a while just to melt some, some aluminum cans and stuff like that. So now I can do it. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and I definitely appreciate you stopping by and spending some time watching and we will see you in the next video.